We are the Franciscan Friars of the Room. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, like spitting on myself. Yeah. <laughs> that was my phone. <laughs> All right, I'm ready? Spitting on you. Yeah. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. And I'm Brother Sean Conrad. We are the Franciscan Friars of Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. Brother Sean is here with us, and he's going to tell us a real life story about meeting the Holy Family. All right. I was stationed in England many years ago, uh, Father, and um, another brother and I decided one day we were taking a little pilgrimage from the town of Dover, which is in southeast England, to Canterbury, uh, because that was the first route that the first Franciscans, when they landed in England, uh, that's where they walked to. So we decided to retrace that step. So we thought mm -hmm. it'd be a good day. Had a beautiful fall day. We decided to do this. Um, we got some information how far, how long it would take us. It was supposed to take four hours to, to walk this through the information that we received. So we weren't too worried about it. Take a leisurely pace. We were planning on getting to Canterbury Cathedral to have the four o'clock uh, or six o'clock mass. We set off. We were taking our time. We stopped for lunch. We visited some people. We're walking along. It's mid-afternoon, and we finally said, we must be getting close to Canterbury by now. We asked somebody, said, how much longer to Canterbury? And they looked at us like we were crazy. You're, Canterbury, you're going there tonight? You're never going to make it tonight. It's miles and miles away. What are you doing? And we looked at each other like, uh, I don't know what we're doing. So we decided to keep walking. Uh, we kept going and going and going. Didn't know how close we were to Canterbury. We were starting to get a little bit, it was now dusk time. I finally saw a sign that said, Canterbury, three miles. I said, okay, it's much longer than I thought it was, but uh, we'll make it an hour. I can deal with that. Um, we walked down this road, and at this point, actually, we got off the trail. The, the, we followed the sides at three miles, got us off the trail. By the end of this mile, we come to another sign that says Canterbury, seven miles. And by the time it was almost dark, and I was beside myself at this point. We had no provisions of anything. I had no extra water, I had no food, you know, a flashlight, because we didn't think we were going to be walking at night. We were totally unprepared. We weren't Boy Scouts, no <laughs> doubt about that. So we're trying desperately, just all we wanted to do at this point was just to get to Canterbury, get the, get the train back to London. Um, I had to work at the, our soup kitchen the next day. Um, we had no way of contacting our brothers, anything, where we were, what was going on. So it's totally dark by this point. We're in this neighborhood. We don't know even where we are. Again, kind of off the trail. And I saw this house at the end of the street, and this was our last chance, I thought, to, to find somebody. I walked down this, this path, and I said a little prayer to Mary, a, a desperate prayer, saying, please, Blessed Mother, let there be a Catholic that lives in this house that understands us and can help us out a little bit. We knocked on the door, and nothing. About 30 seconds, I finally said, she says, well, let's go. We turned away, and as soon as I did that, a voice came from the other side of the door and asked who it was. We told him, two pilgrims going to Canterbury. The door opens right up. And it's an Irish guy and his wife. And it was almost they were like they were expecting us. They were very happy to see us. They weren't surprised, they were surprised, but they were joyful. Brought us in, gave us something to eat, gave us something to drink, um, just took care of us, even prayed night prayer with us. Mm -hmm. uh, they found out the schedule for the trains. We got the last train back to London that night. So they drove us there. We never made it to Canterbury, but at this point we, weren't, we didn't care at all. <laughs> we just got, uh, you know, heaven sent us this family. They got us on the train, he gave us 40 pounds even to get back to London. Um, but the most amazing thing about this story is the name of this couple was Joseph and Mary. So it was like the Holy Family welcomed us in to their house in a desperate moment when we didn't know what we were going to do. And everything turned out so beautifully uh, after that. Kept in touch with that family, uh, saw them many years later, had great laughs over this. Wonderful family. Mm -hmm. um, just very kind, very generous. Um, but that's how God works. His providence can work in the most unexpected ways in the ways when things seem most hopeless and nothing's going to turn out right. And in the blink of an eye, everything turned out beautiful mm -hmm, for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we talk about God's providence and God's providence in like a way like this. It's just this experiential, um, tangible, touchable um, <laughs> expression of God's care yeah. for us. That's it. And my brothers Always. and sisters, the father showed the way he cared for Brother Sean, the other friar, through, through Mary and Joseph in this situation. And um, the reality is, the fact is, the truth is that God the Father cares for you as well. And that's good news. That's very good news, my brothers and sisters. We thank you so much again for watching, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week. Somos peregrinos. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. And sometimes more actual pilgrims than <laughs> <laughs> spiritual pilgrims. We're pilgrims on this earth, little by little, poco a poco. Uh, we're going to make it. Vamos a llegar. Thank you so much. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.